about the expectation towards this presentation. So what I'm going to talk about, because it's a pretty big uh, topic to start your WordPress maintenance business from the scratches. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, some legal stuff because it might be different uh, the independence of the region. For example, in my country, it might be some stuff in your country, it might be a different one. Uh, but I'm going to um, tell you about my experience of starting this project because unfortunately uh, there were two previous projects that failed and they helped me to learn some uh, important stuff about how to start uh, your project and to make it successful. Uh, so, let's start with the clicker. Uh, so, uh, I'll start with the my name. Uh, the steps that you will see now are in going um, in accordance to the development process, for example, uh, you might start with another one, just I prepared my presentation with this one because it helped me to follow the logical structure of my steps for the presentation. So the domain name, how should the domain name be? Uh, so as um, the lady said, uh, my domain, the domain name that I have chosen for uh, my website is WP Dandy. Uh, uh, what does Dandy means, so WP, all of you know it's WordPress, yes, what Dandy means, for for example. So, uh, what we should consider while choosing a domain name? First of all is, um, I think, it's of course it's an advice, to choose a com domain name, uh, .com domain name, sorry. Uh, and why to prioritize a com domain name, uh, .com domain name, instead of these, US, info, because they are all wonderful, but um, the idea is that nowadays users uh, most of the time associate any kind of domain name uh, with .com. Uh, for example, I have observed, just looked into the dashboard of my uh, WordPress website, and I have observed that some, uh, some of you already entered the website, and I suppose mostly because of this branding. For example, when I look at WP Dandy, which association come into your mind, first of all, when you're going to Google? Uh, I mean, uh, are you going to associate it with just wdandy.net, for example, or most of the time it will be .com. Uh, and most of the users, nine, it's already proved by, so, um, by some researches uh, that uh, nine of, out of 10 users, uh, they will search your domain into the com uh, domain name. Uh, one more thing uh, why we should choose a uh, .com domain name instead of others to prioritize, let's say like this, is uh, because those domains are associated with spam. So if you want your uh, newsletters to reach your audience, uh, most of the time uh, .com will be the choice because uh, otherwise, people will spam your uh, address. Of, of course, we can, somebody might say, okay, I'll do some SPF, so for example, and so on and so forth, and I will secure my, um, but what? Uh, once again, it works. So what else we should use? It's, of course, it's an advice is to use, for example, if you're going to start a business in WordPress, is to use WP. Because once again, many people associate WP uh, with um, WordPress. So if you'll use a uh, prefix like WP, uh, in search engines, most uh, of the time people will, for example, if they'll have to choose between a couple of domain names and uh, the one will be your domain name in search, uh, search results, so uh, it must probably that people will click your domain name instead of the others. It's a kind of, of a trick that will help you to get better results. Uh, what else is, so uh, another advice is to create an uh, appealing a member of the domain name. For example, um, when I was choosing my domain, uh, the domain that I'm using now, um, it was pretty difficult, uh, so I ended up with even because I had an idea how it should be because we are providing maintenance services. I ended up even it was such a situation that I thought for 
couple of reasons to name WP Nanny, like a babysitter. So it's kind of tricky, but uh, fortunately, I ended up with WP Dandy. And I suppose that is a kind of good advice for you to choose something that is memorable for people. And also, it should be appealing. For example, if you are providing, like, say, maintenance services, in this situation, it should show your user why they should choose your service already through the domain that you're using. Um, so, this is uh, regarding uh, the domain name. And we are going to the next, it's hosting. Uh, already, I suppose that most of you know a lot about hosting and which one would be a better choice for your um, website. So, I thought the same, um, but I found some points that I could cover here. Uh, some advice would be to choose a housing that is located in the uh, exact area with your clients. Uh, I think most of you will agree, uh, first of all, there is some pros in using a hosting that is close to your um, uh, cli uh, clients, I mean future clients, for example, we are providing, we are orienting mostly on US uh, clients so that we have chosen uh, the domain in that area. Uh, why it's a good uh, choice, uh, a good idea to choose a domain name, a hosting into the area. First of all, the lo this website would load faster. Of course, we could adjust our website and do a lot of customization in order to work, to make it work faster. But anyway, your website will load faster to the users, to your targeted users, if you will host it into their region. And of course, Google. Google uses um, their searching um, algorithms, and one of them is um, the local businesses. So they see, a good, I mean, Google sees uh, the location of your website, and they automatically think that uh, it's suitable for. Uh, the United States based so for some clients, for some. Of course, it's not the only one that should be considered in ranking, but it is just one plus for your website. Uh, another one is to offer a highly reliable top notch hosting. Um, of course, there are different kinds of hostings, uh, and when we are starting our project, we mostly look um, because of some. Uh, economic um, things, for example, like to save some money, we might uh, choose, let's say, not a very reliable hosting. It is not a good idea. It's better to pay a little bit more and to choose a uh, reliable hosting instead of one that you'll pay less. And as a result, for example, I had a, such a situation when I started a previous, a previous project and it was just a free uh, uh, hosting provider. It's like Hostinger, possibly some of you know. And I thought, okay, it's a good choice. For example, I'm going to host my website right here. And I started, and it was okay. It would load very okay for me. But when people started to go to the website, it would just sh shut down, and so it would not work. Okay, the next question is theme. And um, it's controversial. Um, because I wanted to uh, name it uh, design and theme. Uh, the idea is, of course, we can do, do whatever we want with our uh, website. For example, if you have a lot of money, you can uh, hire a designer, a developer that will put all this together and create a custom theme. Uh, but once again, it's with the condition that you have a good amount of money to get started. Um, what I would advise here is to use a multi-purpose theme instead of a developer one. And here are two um, two purposes why I would advise you to do this. Uh, of course, uh, the thing that you develop yourself as a developer might work, but it will uh, need your time developing. And in the situation that you are, let's say, one or two person that doing a lot of stuff, and this kind of business is pretty difficult because uh, alongside with your website, you have to support many other websites, so you need more and more resources. Uh, so in case you will choose a ready-made multi-purpose theme, for example, you can adjust it by using child uh, theme for your website theme. 
And in this situation, all the updates will be practically for free for you, and they will be secure and so on. So you don't, you won't have to, um, to, to spend your time developing and maintaining your own theme. Um, another advice here would be to choose an optimizable theme because I'm going to talk in the next slide. Uh, what does it mean exactly? Um, yeah, as I said, if you decide to choose a pre-made multipurpose theme, you have to look into the theme and to see if it works really. Uh, it's optimizable, of course. So speed, speed of your website. It's um, also very important because we know that there are a couple of uh, points in Google search algorithm that um, are very sensible for the speed of your website. Somebody mentioned to, uh, today about A and P of the website. I don't think it's an option for uh, business until now because it is a very, very cut version of what your website can provide. And, but a good optimization is a must for every business that starts on the website. Uh, Amazon, for example, uh, has some statistics that tell us that around 20% of the clients will leave your website with each passing second that will your website will load. For example, let's say you have 100%, you load, for example, two, two seconds, and so if somebody will wait for three seconds, they will leave, and so on and so forth. So after six, six seconds, you have almost no clients on your website. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, how we can choose which theme to use, of course, um, I mentioned when I sent this presentation that it's mostly for those who want to start a business, uh, but now I see a lot of developers, so some of you might not agree with me because you, can, you know your job, you can do even better, but this is for those who don't want to spend a lot of time um, maintaining their theme and doing stuff like this, but instead they want to um, spend their time for something else. So uh, what, how we can see if our theme is optimizable, for example, we can run it through the speed checker, for example, like uh, page speed insights from, that is using Lighthouse. And if it doesn't help, for example, because sometimes it doesn't see those uh, wrong, uh, that wrong stuff that happens with your website, so just metrics might help you. Uh, so even those well May theme needs some optimization because when you enter, uh, like say, a demo uh, theme, for example, and you're looking into the theme, it looks pretty good. So you are going through the um, through this checker and you see it's around uh, ninety percent in uh, Google PageSpeed, for example, and say, okay, that's is my theme. But you can get even better, for example, if you optimize your theme. So um, yeah, there are some different type of practices in this situation, so you can optimize the entire code, or you can use some plugins that are free of charge on, in WordPress repository. Um, for example, I personally like, uh, I use, I'm using just a single uh, plugin for these purposes, it's auto-optimize, and some um, code into HTTP access files, so it helps me to get some good results around 90% for the desktop version um, in Google PageSpeed. Uh, of course, database optimization, uh, at the very beginning it will work for you, but with the time as your company works, your website, I have uh, for 15 more minutes, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, okay, so, and the last version of the PHP, it also very helpful. Why I'm talking about this because um, um, yeah, you want your website to get higher into the search engine results, so it might uh, help you. And the security, of course, security also matters very much. So, um, so you have uh, let's um, make an assumption that you have started your uh, web website or business website. So, and you might observe that some people might try penetrate your website. So. Uh, of course, there are a lot of practices how to secure a website, and here are just some of them uh, because there is no 100% proof against hacking nowadays. I also um, 
Okay, let's go from top to down. Um, so use an HTTPS, uh, HTTPS encrypted um, connection. It's helpful. Uh, it, it is uh, even more effective when you receive payments on your website, for example. I have observed that some businesses in my field, like in Montana's, for example, some of you might know this website, like um, WP Curve, for example, um, there are some more. So that they are not using, they are using just a couple of forms that they get the information from the clients and they uh, don't use payment. But in case you'll be using payment right on your website, for example, there's a good plugin that might work in this situation. It's called uh, Projectopia. That it helps you to get the project task to communicate with your clients right on your website. And even payment might go for your website. So in this situation, encrypted connection will be very helpful. Um, so to keep your WordPress core, core plugins theme up to date, it's an obvious uh, point, but yeah, we have to keep it um, secured. Um, antivirus plugin, some personal I use. Um, I don't remember exactly, we have some emotions, but it's uh, a good to use an antivirus, even though it's not very practical, so you'll have uh, to do most of the checking by yourself, but um, yeah, it might be helpful. Uh, to hide your authentication pages, uh, mostly, once again, for the security reasons, because uh, yeah, this, if this is a homemade hacker, so they might uh, enter your website and look just for. And also, there's a problem with the uh, uh, Google Dorks. For example, I have uh, uh, learned about this topic for some time ago, and I observed that even my website would be a potential victim of the hackers just introducing in Google just these two commas and. WP admin, and they would find that it's a WordPress website. Uh, use two-factor authentication, mostly for the admin panel. Uh, hide any possible information regarding the CMS. Actually, I, I think it's pretty easy to do in this situation, so you won't need to spend a lot of time um, by using a child theme that will have no information about the website. Of course, you can dig deeper and find the information, but once again, it might be helpful for, at least for the first time. And run penetration testing, possibly some of you are using uh, this kind of like software like um, WP Scan on Kali Linux. Uh, for example, each time I update uh, my website, I'm looking, uh, running, I'm running it through the WP Scan in order to see it, if it doesn't have some vulnerab vulnerabilities. Uh, as you will. Okay, I'm not uh, very good in SEO, but there is some, because once again, I have started in on my own, and I can't afford now paying for a good SEO expert, so I have to do, I have to study a lot of stuff on my own. And so for already half a year, I am studying very hard this topic, um, and what I can advise you here is a good um, American, um, as you all experts like Neil Patel, I don't know if you ever heard about him. Uh, he doesn't tell 100% what you have to do, but it's pretty, pretty uh, good, at least to know all that stuff. So uh, in terms of SEO, we know those who are good in SEO uh, will agree with me. We have two stages in like working with SEO. It's on-page SEO and off-page SEO. And some advices, once again, this is not a to-do to list, just a couple of advices from what I observed. First of all, for on-page SEO, what we have to do? We have to run and implement an uh, initial on-page SEO audit. Can we do it on our own? I think just searching for some information on Google, we can do it on the ourselves. Uh, another advice would be to perform an in-depth keyword competitor research. Uh, of course, some, some of you might say, for example, okay, you need a lot of time, a lot of money, for example, to pay some tools like, um, I don't know, a Azure F, for example, or SAMrush. Uh, once again, for a very tight budget, you might use Neil Patel's SEO uh, mm, 
tool that is called Ubersuggest. It's absolutely for free. And even though it doesn't give you 100% uh, accurate results, but it at least helps you in a couple of things to work with. Uh, of course, identifying uh, uh, and contract an expert. Ah, I'm sorry. Put together a list of prior work keywords. So, um, my mistake in my previous project was that I have put myself the uh, pre work keywords, I have done some articles, and I would expect to get results, but it doesn't work this way. So my advice would be to choose those keywords that you want to rank for, and after that, you can unleash the creativity of your copywriter. So don't, uh, I don't know, let's say, ask them to do just use these keywords and that's all, for example. Just try to limit the area, for example, if this WordPress to be WordPress. Um, and identifying contract and expert native speaker as a copywriter. Um, some advices would be here uh, when you are contracting uh, this kind of uh, personal is to choose a copywriter that possesses the language uh, of the region that you are targeting. For example, I have worked with some uh, British copywriters, with some, even with some Indians, because I would uh, think at the very beginning the lower price is better, but after that I understand it doesn't work this way. So you have to pay at least an average price in order to get some results that might be useful for you, because paying less it doesn't mean that you'll uh, get, because if it would be this way, everyone would be, I don't know, uh, expert so copywriter. So that from my experience I found an average price and I'm using I am uh, contracting now only American copywriters because once again I'm orienting on uh, American market and I can say that it, it works. Uh, I have observed that those artis, articles that were written by British copywriters, even though it's the same language as English, but most of the people uh, future clients that would come to my website would be British ones and some Indians. So as I'm not going to cover this market, so I decided to switch to American copywriters. So now I use just these ones. Uh, and have your asset content published, of course, this is already for the next one, but okay. So some off-page SEO is to identify a website um, uh, that are closely related to your niche in order to do some link building, of course. It's a very huge topic to discuss about, but what I would suggest to you to use the same language, the, the website that have the same language, like American English, for your website. Because once again, you will uh, narrow the targeted audience of your website. And Google somehow also sees uh, the things, so uh, it gives, gives you some more gist. Uh, contract uh, their own guest. Uh, oh, by the way, there is a way how we can build a good uh, link building strategy is by using guest posting. I think almost of you know about this, uh, so I'm not going to talk very much about this. But once again, try to choose only the best uh, quality websites. For example, some websites that have some trash articles you know, don't need, even though they will give you a link, but you don't need this kind of. Uh, um, get your guest spot published, have your backlink, and repeat it once again. So time by time, don't work at 110 well, articles. Try to do, do the, the best of your own to get uh, the best results, the best article, the best link. So the next one is support channels. Uh, once again, uh, when we are providing support channels, I observed that some of uh, the competitors uh, in the same field, uh, they have some poor uh, poor uh, channels, communication channels, for example. Some of them will provide like Messenger, for example, some of them will provide a contact form, and so on and so forth. Uh, first of all, uh, from the point of view of trust, Americans were like, say, what their European countries, they won't trust you until you don't have at least uh, a phone number in their country, for example. As I mentioned, I'm orienting on American market, so I have a phone number. How to do this? Uh, I personally use an um, SIP, 
I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, Sip uh, until I won't find some guys that will, I will be able to deal with them because we are working with a company that, uh, but we need to find an agreement, for example, which project they take for themselves, which project are we going to give to them in order to do this kind of business. Um, so, um, and to, uh, another advice would be to use a project management panel. So automatization is very important. If you are going to use, I don't know, a contact form, it's just zero uh, uh, optimization. So uh, contract, uh, contact man uh, I'm sorry, project management panel would be very useful for you in order to optimize. Uh, of course, you can also use a CRM, for example, to do some uh, more optimization. And as I mentioned previously, to use a US phone number. It also increases the level of um, trustability to your uh, website. And that's all, because I don't have more time. So in case you have some questions, I would be glad to answer your question. Once again, it's just what I observed, and it helped me to get those results. So it might be a lot of even more points that might be useful in this situation, but at this point, this is what I would like to share with you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for, uh, first of all, thank you for your speech. Thank and you I have a small question about Google have now new domain uh, uh, area like uh, dot dev, and what do you think about uh, use this uh, for development of WordPress for blog or uh, another? Um, do you do you know? Yes, dot uh, dev, like instead dot uh, com. Uh, no, never heard about this. Possibly yeah. it's my uh, my <laughs> mistake. Never heard about this, but the idea if I would choose another type of domain name for this, oops. Uh, actually I thought that I might use also AO because I thought my project would be something very innovative, but I pretty quickly understood that there are a lot of companies that do the same stuff, so all I have to do is uh, to keep real, for example, <laughs> let's say like this, and to do the job that most of the people do, but to do it a little better, for example. Uh, I don't know, for example, if you enter some of the competitors' website, there are a lot, for example, just introducing Google, WordPress, Mentanis, and you will see a lot of competitors that do the same stuff, but they, their websites are loading very slow. I suppose it's a kind of their mistake, so not making them load faster. But about what you answered, uh, what your question was, I wouldn't choose another domain instead of this com. Once again, there are some reasons why we have to stick with calm domain name. And of course, if your project is very innovative and you're providing something that only your project can do, it's IO, for example. It's also a very trusted a domain name. But mostly when I entered a website, I choose for calm, uh, dot com domain name. After that, I move to IO if I think that it might be something innovative. Okay, thank you very much for Thank you very much for answer. your question. Еще раз, это не проблема, просто как бы я да, уже все приготовил на английском. Приветствую, спасибо за интересный доклад. У меня больше такой вопрос не о том, как начать, да, а о том, что дальше. Я просто как разработчик, который в том числе и в очень много и долго в течение длительного времени поддерживаю клиентов, ну и их проекты развиваю дальше, я тоже задумывался о том, чтобы брать проекты существующие, чужие на поддержку. Да? И вот из опыта, как правильно балансировать то, что ну, есть определенное количество часов, за которые клиент платит, правильно? Но даже для решения как казалось бы, простых проблем, возможно, понадобится много времени на то, чтобы разобраться с проектом и с кодом. Как вы решаете это в команде? Uh, ну, во-первых, uh, именно на данный вопрос uh, я отвечу небольшим таким вот uh, украчен, да, uh, 
Keep it simple. Да? Но еще раз, что я имею в виду здесь. Ну, Во-первых, у нас есть перечень предоставляемых услуг. К примеру, если там нужно кодинг, да, он будет уже отдельно. Да? Но базовое то, что есть, это там, к примеру, апдейт, все такое. Конечно, мы, я, к примеру, настаиваю на том, чтобы это было делано не автоматически. Вот, к примеру, есть такие вот хорошие… Как бы программки, не программки, извиняюсь, как назвал неправильно, ресурсы, да, которые позволяют делать все это автоматически. Есть WP Manage, а, не, Manage WP. Ну, это же автоматика, это любой может делать, да, но если у тебя начинают лезть ошибки, да, после того, что ты сделал, там, обновил 10 сайтов, нажав на одну кнопку, то этого обратно же не стоит делать, это нехорошо. Как я это делаю, по сути, получается, что пока что я это делаю, да, Uh, ну, обратно же, это mirroring, да, когда озерка, отзеркаливание, да, не, не ставим сразу, там обновили uh, движок, да, там тему обновили, плагин обновили, там куча ошибок и все такое. Обратно все это делается отдельно, в отдельном сервере. Также uh, создаются вот эти бакапы, да, которые uh, мы храним их у себя, да, потом уже со временем мы их удаляем, конечно, это там есть… Благодаря этому GDPR, да, здесь очень много таких нюансов возникает, да, поэтому мы делаем вот этот uh, transparency, да, uh, мы говорим, что мы вот делаем этот бэкап, они поддерживаются вот такое время, да, они вот с такой регулярностью обновляются и все такое. Uh, что еще больше? Ну, обратно же очень внимательно все это нужно делать, да, что еще можно добавить здесь? Ну, если я правильно понял, то э, получается, что в э, вот эту, ну, как бы тарифный план по поддержке, да, входит определенный перечень э, ну, задач, услуг, которые да. прогнозируемы по времени и ресурсам. Да, да. А все, что идет уже сверху, как бы какие-то ну, более сложные вещи, которые нужно оценить как отдельную задачу, то они идут просто уже как доп. работы. Ну да, ну, обычно, вот, к примеру, базовый пакет он не, вообще не включает вот эти вот дополнительные доработки, там дизайн, верстка, программирование, да, там второй уже среднего вот такой, он включает уже там полчаса и где-то до часу, да, чтобы сильно это. Но обратно же принимаются и заказы на более такие сложные задачи, даже по SEO, хотя у нас… А uh, парень, с которым работали, там, uh, ну, он как, на несколько компаний работает, да, и у него там времени не очень мало, много, но обратно уже пытаемся и даже здесь uh, как-то помогать клиентам. И... Спасибо. Спасибо. Еще вопросы? Спасибо докладчику. Еще? Да. Спасибо за доклад. Хочу спросить, какие ваши любимые темы, какие темы темплейты вы пользуетесь? А, ну, мой любимый темплейт это темплейт от A Theme, ну и в основном темплейты от A Themes. Я заметил, что они, в принципе, особо не. Конечно, это базовые версии, там уже более таких продвинутых версий у них там тоже начинаются вот такие вопросы, когда больше скриптов, все такое, но обратно это нужно как-то реализовать, да, и все понимают, что это нужно как-то делать. После этого там происходит оптимизация. Ну, еще раз отвечая на ваш вопрос, я больше использую тему Day Themes. Конечно, есть и другие темы, которые, в принципе, я тоже указываю на сайте, которые мне кажется, что они, там есть блок section, там и… Девушка пишет вот эти вот статьи, да, в которые она там этот список описывает, да. А, ну, мне кажется, вот именно вот это вот iThemes. Конечно, есть другие темы, которые я раньше исполнили, честно, сейчас больше так на нервах. Я не могу сказать больше из тех, которые я припоминаю. Есть еще Helio. Uh, точно я скажу компания, но он очень хорошо оптимизированный шаблон, да, который… Да. Спасибо.